Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and I'm continuing the AP Physics 1 2015 for your response questions. So let's continue with number two. Some students want to know what gets used up in an incandescent light bulb when it, with, when it is in series with a resistor, current, energy, or both. They come up with the following equations. In one second, do fewer electrons leave the bulb than enter the bulb? And two, does the electric potential of the electrons change while inside the bulb? The students have an adjustable power source insulated wire, light bulbs, resistor switches, voltmeters, ammeters, and other standard lab equipment. Assume that the power supply and the voltmeters are marked 0.1 volt integrant and the ammeters are marked 0.01 amp in increments. Describe an experimental procedure that could be used to answer questions one and two above. In your description, state the measurements you would make them, how you use the equipment to make them include in a neat labeled diagram of your setup. Jeez, they're really like, I mean, this is a first year, so they're kind of, you know, still kind of new at making these questions. This is a little strange. In one second, do fewer electrons leave the bulb than enter the bulb? They got ammeters. So for question one, I'm going to have... Okay, so this is my incandescent light bulb. Okay, my look at my neat diagram. Okay, I'm gonna hook up an ammeter in series. I'm gonna cook an ammeter here in series, and this is these are gonna go to my power supply. And the ammeters are going to measure the current going in and the current going out, right? I, I'm not going to write all this out in a paragraph because I'm just trying to explain to you what I would write. You would kind of write that um, the ammeters are going to are set up to measure are connected to the power source and set to measure the amount of current going in and going current going out. If there's a difference in the current, that's indicating how many electrons are being stored inside of the light bulb, which you should know that does not happen, right? All the electrons flow all the way through. They don't store electrons. Okay, so that's that's the first experimental setup. The second experimental setup is to take um, the same kind of setup, but now I want does the electric potential of the electrons change while inside the bulb? Well, what I want to do is um, have a voltmeter. Oh, I guess I can do it with the same one. I can do a voltmeter here and a voltmeter here. So I want to here. Then I would have voltage measurements from here to here and he, uh, basically across this point. You could do it like this way, or you could do one voltmeter just across it to see what if there's a voltage across it. That might be that might make more sense and more direct. Let's undo this. A voltmeter there. And then this would at simultaneously be measuring whether or not the voltage across this is varying. Okay, so that's kind of the setup here. And you don't need to adjust the voltage. I don't know, like this sort of, um, oh, okay, I see. These are the measurement accuracies of these things. Okay, and explain how the data from my experiment. So what I would do is I would measure the current so let's say this is I1, I2, and V1. To answer one, I would question, does I1 equal I2? And then the answer two is V greater than zero. Okay. I mean, you should know the answer to this. This is yes, and then this is no. Both of these are yes, right? And so if so, then no electrons are stored. And then if so, if yes, then voltage drop across light bulb. And hence, there's an energy change here, okay? See how, if at all, does this setup need? Oh, a light bulb is non-ohmic if its resistance changes as a function of current. 
your setup from part A is to B is to modify to determine whether the light bulb is non-ohmic. How far does the setup need to be modified? Well, now I need, oh no, uh, I guess this, I don't need to modify it, but what I need to record is different currents. See, in the per first experiment, I just had a fixed power value. Now I need to be able to adjust, adjust the power. So I might need to add a resistor here that I can change and adjust the value. So maybe that's the change I would make. And then I would record all the same data, but I would record um, each of these as I vary the resistance. So I, they would need to be paired up together. D, how would you analyze the data to determine whether the bulb is not ohmic? Include a discussion how uncertainties in the voltmeters and ammeters would affect your argument for including the resistor is, ohmic, is non ohmic. I would want to plot um, I1 versus V and see how straight the line straight of a line it is right because for it to be ohmic it's a line v equal i i have a relationship called the resistance right and um i would look at the data and i would see how they, they varied now um you're limited by the accuracy of v and a v a voltage and current because those things aren't perfect but if as long as I um, did enough enough points or did enough power values, then I could kind of see like whether or not there's a linear trend or not. Okay. Is that it for that one? Yeah, that's it for that one. So let's look at number two. That was kind of a weird experiment. They did a lot better in the later uh, year exams, I think. So maybe this was just a little bit of a light bulb power source. Put a resistor here. Um, yep. Describing analytical method of explaining the data, currency on both sides, the number of electrons, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Describing analytical method of using the data and explain how that can be used to answer question two. We did that. Example, remove one of the ammeters. That's true. I don't need to measure both ammeters. I don't technically need to remove the ammeter. I just don't need the data from one of the ammeters. Um, correctly indicating no changes are really needed. Uh, measure the current through the bulb, three points. I'm, I'm curious about this one. Describing an analytical method which data are represented or manipulated can plausibly determine whether the current value is linearly. Graph, okay. That's what I talked about, graphing. Um, and determining the linearity of it. For describing a strategy or evaluating whether the conclusion of is valid given data set, I think, I mean, uncertainty. Drawing error boxes or uncertain meters around each of the point of value a straight line can be drawn goes through all the error boxes, indicating small difference or ratio be uncertainty in meters when I discount the conclusion is. Yeah, I mean, I think I would have more of explained it the second way that, you know, it's small and so there will be some differences. It kind of depends on how nonlinear it looks or not. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in the next free response question. Thanks. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I just want to let you know that I offer free homework help on Twitch or Discord. So uh, just stop on by if you have any homework questions or you just want to learn about different parts of math and physics and hang out. Hope to see you there.